Good morning, Frisk. Look, the sun is shining. Today is going to be a wonderful day. Oh, too tired. Have you forgotten about your agreement with Napster Bloke and Monster Kid? Frisk perked up at the mention of their friends' names. <laughs> you had completely forgotten about it, had you not? Maybe. They quickly stood up and got ready. Toriel had already prepared breakfast for everyone this time. After finishing breakfast, Frisk felt very determined to face every challenge that might cross their path. Time passed, and at exactly ten, the doorbell rang. I'll open it. Hello, Napsalu. I I've been waiting here for, for fifteen minutes. I, I I just didn't want to ring the bell yet, because it wasn't ten yet. Sorry. Ah, good morning, Napster Bloke. I have put aside some toast for you, in case you are hungry. Or perhaps you would like some cereal? Oh, thanks. G girls don't really eat, but thanks. Would the food fall through you? Well... Frisk! Where are your manners? Sorry, Mom. It's fine. Not the first time somebody asked that. Yeah. Still, that is a really inappropriate question. Frisk, please apologize to Napster Bloke. Sorry. Hello, Monster Kid. Frisk, I'm so excited. Frisk hugged Monster Kid. Hello, Monster Kid. I have put aside some toast and cereal for you as well. Feel free to take whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Dorio. The armless monster immediately sat down on the table, eyes lighting up with joy over the smell of fresh bread and jam. Toriel and the others watched him with amusement. Yo, this is so good! Thank you, little one. You're welcome, this was really good. <laughs> hey, what's up, Frisk? You have jam all over your face. Oh. <laughs> you still remember where the bathroom is, correct? Yeah, I'll be right back. So what is your plan for today? Frisk looked at Napsablook, who shook his head. Frisk shrugged. Fighting the monsters, I guess. How are you going to do that? Napsablook, you said you saw Muffet head to Ebbet, right? I think I did. I'm not sure. It could have been someone else. Don's sister was also seen walking in that direction. So we're going to the mountain. That is really far away, especially if you are trying to climb it up as well. You are also assuming that everyone went back into the underground, correct? Yep. But why would they do that? Yo, what you talking about? We're talking about our plans for today. Well, we're gonna rescue the monsters and be heroes. <laughs> I am afraid it will not be that easy. Well, we have a few hints leading to the mountain, so... I know, my dear. But it would take around two to three days to reach the underground's entrance. Does that mean we can take some of the jelly sandwiches with us? Do you not remember that you have school tomorrow? And perhaps Napster Bloke has a job he wants to return to as well. Um, sometimes... Sometimes I help Metaton with music on his shows. But, uh, he's gone. So, there's no point. We can just... Skip school. Toriel, you're a teacher. Can't you just go, like, yo, they have to rescue monster kind and can't attend to school? Please. Besides, office is gone too, so she can't even teach us. I can teach you. Your education is important, and I do not want you to miss out on anything. Isn't the safety of the other monsters more important? I guess I cannot. Yes, thank you so much, Toriel. I'll go tell my parents about this. Monster Kid, wait! But he was already out of the house. I cannot let you go on this journey on your own, though. We have Napstabook. I do not want to give someone else the burden of taking care of you on such a risky travel, Frisk. Oh, actually, I'd be fine with that. I'm sure they aren't that bad. And I really want to find Metaton. The others too, of course. <sighs> I really have no way of stopping you at all, do I? Frisk smiled mischievously and shrugged. 
It seems like it is decided then. I will pack up all the things that you will need. Frisk, remember to use your phone. I want to hear from you every day, alright? It's okay, Mom. I'm not done anymore. That does not lessen my worry. Time passed and Monster Kid came back and announced that his parents were letting him participate. Toriel packed a backpack for Frisk and gave Napster Blue a map. It was levitating in front of his face as he was studying the details and memorizing the path. So, we just need to get out of town and then go through the forest until we see the mountain? That's it? Correct. It is the only way to get to Ebbet. The forest is deep and that path appears to be the only possible passage. Take good care of each other. Do not lose track of the path. Listen to anything Napsterblok says, my children. Uh, uh, oh, uh, actually, uh, I don't know if that's the, the best idea. I, I... Do not worry, I believe in you. Yo, you'll be fine, dude. This is gonna be so cool. He's right. It's not like we're going to war. Yeah, man. And even if we fight, you don't have to help us. We can beat up the bad guys on our own. <laughs> you should go now. I still do not like this idea, but it is not the first time I've let you go on such a dangerous trip. Besides, in the end, everything turned out very well, did it not? First, it looked like they just remembered something. Yeah. So, let's finally go now! Toriel hugged Frisk for a little too long before she let go and opened the door for the three of them. Farewell, my children. And Napsterblok too, of course. <laughs> Frisk, remember to turn on your phone and text me every day. I will let you know if anybody comes back. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Miss Toriel. Bye, Toriel. You know, I actually have no idea what's going on. Like, they're all gone. So many of them are just gone. We didn't even notice until now. What if they're- Weren't you really excited for all this just a minute ago? Don't overthink it. We gotta stay positive? Yeah. Just saying, yeah, it's probably fine. Hey Frisk, yo monster kid. Why are you looking so down? Don't be sad. Sad backwards is dance, and that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm already feeling a lot better. Thanks, Snowdrake. Snowdrake appeared to be a mix between a duck a snowflake, and a dragon, with light blue feathers and an orange beak. So, what are you up to with backpacks and all? Have you noticed that some of the monsters disappear? Nope. I mean, it's a lot quieter than usual, but that's about it. Like, half of town is missing. Damn, I didn't know. Actually though, Childrake hasn't been responding to my messages I sent him this morning. Usually he's there in like, what, two minutes? You think he's also missing? Don't know. Might be. It's just very unusual for him to leave me on red like that. Alright. We'll keep an eye out for him. Thanks a ton, you two. See you around. They didn't even notice. I keep going. We're almost at the forest. Wait. Huh? Remember the spot? What about it? This is the bush where that Tammy came from. Right? Mm-hmm. So? It said it would wait, and it's not here. Trust me, if these things make a promise to you, they never break it. Are you telling me- Yep. I mean, most of them were already gone yesterday, so now probably all of them vanished. This is getting spooky. I have to know, because I'm a ghost. Ghosts usually are spooky, but this is more spooky. Uh oh. S stop talking now. <laughs> You're right. This is spooky. Let's just go and get to the forest as soon as possible. Frisk had been affected more than they let the others know. This was, indeed, a very strange situation. At this point, they were really starting to believe that somebody had kidnapped the monsters. What else could have happened? Was there a pattern? What did the missing people have in common? Why would anybody kidnap them? Who even had the power to do so? The only evidence they had was Muffet and Dawn's sister, who were last seen going down that exact path they were on right now. 
Frisk, yo! Frisk was torn from their thoughts by the friend calling out for them. Huh? Look at this! The yellow monster was standing above an empty bottle of ketchup that had been thrown away, a few feet before the edge of the woods. Frisk took a closer look. You thinking what I'm thinking? Sans. Every time we hang out with the pirates, there's tons of ketchup bottles everywhere. He always gets annoyed by it, and then yells at Sans about healthy food and how he always has to clean up after his brother. Yeah, that happens. But does this count as proof that he went past here? It's at least something. How is this not enough proof? I'm just trying to rule out all possibilities. He might have dropped it when he came past here normally, right? But their house is on the other side of town. And usually, there's nobody around here. Yeah, you're right. Let's keep going. We're on the right path. Exactly. Let's just... Whoa. He turned around and faced the forest. The trees were dark and high. Mist was wavering in the distance. There was an endless, suffocating silence originating from these woods. Not a single beam of sunlight could reach the gravel path that was slowly being swallowed by eternal darkness. I forgot how cool this forest was! Yo! With that, he sped down the passage. Oh, we should probably catch up with him or something. And so they all wandered deeper into the woods not knowing what terrors might lurk around the corner, not knowing what obstacles they had to overcome, not knowing that this adventure was so much more than they imagined.